Son, what are you doing? I heard my mother's voice behind me. Fear gripped me as soon as I heard her. I quickly turned to face her, and I saw her moving closer. Why are you dressed like a girl? The drama is over, and there's no reason for you to be wearing female clothes, she said, her voice stern. For a few seconds, I was silent, unable to process the unexpected situation. I had played a female character in our college drama, which was my first experience cross-dressing. I had performed the role perfectly, and most of my teachers and friends had praised my beauty as a girl. During that time, I found myself genuinely enjoying the experience. A passion for cross-dressing had begun to take root in my mind. This newfound passion was something I couldn't easily shake off. The day after the final performance, I found myself alone at home and decided to dress as a girl again. I wore a frock and applied lipstick, though I didn't put on any makeup since I didn't have the skill for it. As fate would have it, my mother came home unexpectedly and caught me in the act. After a few seconds of silence, I tried to speak to her. There's no special reason, Mom. I just did it because I was bored, I said, my voice trembling with fear. Son, this habit isn't good for you. Are you interested in dressing as a girl or becoming one? My mother asked earnestly. No, no, Mom. I don't have any special passion for cross-dressing. Wait, I'll take off this frock, I quickly replied. There's no need to rush, darling she said softly, before heading to her bedroom. I realized then that my mother wasn't comfortable seeing me dressed as a girl. Despite my growing passion for cross-dressing, her negative reaction made me rethink my desires. I felt a pang of sadness but decided to suppress my urge to cross-dress. I walked into my bedroom to remove the frock and lipstick. Standing in front of the full-length mirror, I looked at my reflection, knowing that I might never again feel the softness of female clothes. With a heavy heart, I took off the frock and headed to the bathroom to remove the lipstick and take a bath. As I washed off the lipstick, I watched my lips return to their natural color. Under the shower, I let the water flow over me, cooling my mind and helping me forget my sadness. Time passed quickly, and I grew older, focusing on my studies and eventually completing my degree. By the time I was 25, I was working in an import-export company in my hometown and still living with my parents. Unlike other boys my age, I had a thin beard and smooth skin, almost like a girl's. I preferred to be alone and spent time watching cross-dressing videos and reading stories. But I didn't think about dressing up again. Meanwhile, my parents arranged for me to marry a girl. At the time, I wasn't thinking much about marriage, but soon enough, I found myself starting a new life with my wife. Emery. Emery was a 23-year-old with a slim figure and a love for fashion. She worked at an IT company in our city. We grew close very quickly. One day, I fell ill with a fever and took the day off from work. Darling, should I take a leave to care for you today? My wife asked, checking my body temperature with concern. No need, darling. I can manage. You should go to the office, I replied, trying to reassure her. I've prepared your food and drinks and left them on the table, she said before leaving for work. I slept for another hour, then woke up and had my breakfast. Feeling bored, I noticed our freshly washed clothes on the drying rack. I decided to put them away in the cupboard. I spread the clothes out on the bed and began storing them one by one. As I was doing so, I came across one of my wife's pretty bras. I held it in my hand, gently running my fingers over the soft material. Unbeknownst to me, the desire for cross-dressing that had been lying dormant in my heart began to resurface. I tried to suppress these feelings, but they were too strong. My mind was urging me to try on the bra. Since my teenage years, I hadn't had the chance to wear any female clothing. The urge to try on the bra grew overwhelming. I removed my shirt and picked up the bra. Remembering how to put one on, I managed to fasten it around me. I then took a pair of stockings and placed them inside the bra cups, adjusting them to create a more natural breast shape. After so many years, I was once again feeling the softness of a bra against my skin. I stepped in front of the mirror and looked at my reflection. The image staring back at me stirred deep feminine feelings within. My mind kept telling me not to waste this opportunity. I should fully dress as a girl. The urge grew stronger, 
and I finally decided to try on one of my wife's frocks. I selected a beautiful short frock from her wardrobe and slipped it on. As the fabric touched my skin, a wave of feminine sensations washed over me. Next, I took my wife's makeup box and applied some compact powder to my face, followed by a layer of lipstick to complete a simple look. When I gazed into the mirror, I saw a new beauty staring back at me. For a few minutes, I simply admired my transformed appearance. Then, feeling bold, I decided to go to the living room. I turned on the TV, deciding to spend my free morning enjoying being a girl, knowing that my wife usually came home late in the evening. Time passed unnoticed as I reveled in the feminine feelings. The last time I glanced at the clock, it was 12 o'clock. Suddenly, I was startled by a noise. I turned abruptly towards the main door, only to be shocked into silence. Standing there, with a look of utter confusion, was my wife. What is wrong with you? She asked angrily, her voice sharp. I stood there, speechless, unsure of what to say. She came closer, examining me with a mixture of anger and disbelief. Her fury left me frozen. I never expected this kind of behavior from you. I don't even know what to think right now, she said, her voice trembling with emotion. I'm sorry, Emery, I did this for fun. I promise I'll never do it again, I said, desperately trying to apologize. I hate you, she spat before storming off into the bedroom. I sat in the living room, lost in thought, wondering what I had done. After a few minutes, I saw my wife emerge from the bedroom with her travel bag in hand. I'm leaving, she said, not even looking at me. Emery, please don't do this, I pleaded, my voice filled with innocence and regret. But Emery didn't care, she walked out of the house without a second glance. I sank onto the sofa, my heart heavy with hopelessness. Hours passed as I sat there, feeling utterly defeated. As darkness fell, I slowly made my way to the bathroom, removed the frock and makeup, and took a long bath. I then changed back into my regular male clothes. Sitting on the bed, I tried calling Emery, but she didn't answer. I lay down, my mind weighed down with despair, and eventually drifted off to sleep without realizing it. The next day, I woke up a little later than usual. Though my health had improved, I decided to take another day to rest. As I sat on the bed, my eyes fell on the frock I had worn the day before, and I regretted my decision to dress as a girl. After a few minutes, I got up, took a bath, and had my breakfast. Afterward, I settled in the living room and tried calling Emery again, but she still didn't pick up. Frustrated, I decided to send her a voice message, explaining everything that had happened. I poured my heart out, hoping she would understand. Then, I spent the day watching TV, trying to distract myself from the uncertainty of what lay ahead. That evening, as I was watching TV, I heard the sound of the doorbell. I got up and went to the door. And when I opened it, I was surprised by what I saw. There, standing at the entrance, was my wife, Emery, with a loving smile on her face. I'm sorry, Daniel, I was upset and needed time to understand, she said softly. It's okay, Emery, I replied, relief washing over me. She walked toward me and pulled me into a big hug. I understand your feelings now. I'll never leave you again, darling, she said, holding my hand tightly. I did something wrong. I promise I'll never do anything like that again, I said, looking down at the floor. No, darling, it wasn't wrong. It's a natural thing, and I understand you now, she reassured me, looking into my eyes. I'll never try something so foolish again, I insisted, still feeling guilty. Daniel, I'm serious. There's something special I want to tell you, she said eagerly. Tell me anything, I replied, curious. I'd like to give you the chance to dress as a girl for a day, my wife said, holding my hand. I was stunned by her proposal. I couldn't believe the words I was hearing. I never expected this from her. No, darling, I've decided not to give in to my passion for cross-dressing, I said confidently. Daniel, I want to make up for how I acted. I'd like to help you fulfill your cross-dressing fantasy, she said earnestly. Let's see, darling, but for now, you need to rest. I'll bring you a cup of coffee. Go and take a bath, I instructed my wife.
Our conversation ended on a hopeful note, leaving me with a sense of anticipation. The rest of the week passed uneventfully, filled with our usual routines. Then Saturday morning arrived. We both slept in longer than usual, enjoying the slower pace of the weekend. After breakfast, I settled into the living room and began watching a musical program on TV. As I watched, my wife entered the living room. Daniel, do you have any special plans for today? She asked. No, dear, why do you ask? I replied, curious about her question. Daniel, I have a special plan for today, she said with a hint of excitement. A special plan? What do you mean? I asked, surprised. I've decided to help you fulfill your cross-dressing passion. I want to help you dress as a girl, my wife said, taking my hand. I was stunned by her proposal and remained silent for a few minutes. I've gotten rid of that desire, I said, looking down at the floor. In truth, I hadn't lost the desire to dress as a girl. I only said that because I was afraid it might cause problems between me and my wife, Emery. I know, Daniel, you can't just forget that desire. Don't hesitate to indulge your passion, she encouraged. I thought about it for a few moments, and finally, I decided to give in to my long-held desire. What time do we start? I asked. A smile spread across my wife's face. We can start now, follow me, she said, leading the way to our bedroom. I followed her, my heart racing with anticipation. Once inside the bedroom, she turned to me with a serious expression. Daniel, I think we need to do your transformation perfectly. It will help you fully experience that feminine feeling, she said. I'm not sure I understand your plan, I admitted. I want to do your transformation the right way, she explained. Let's do it your way, I agreed with a smile. First, you'll need to remove your body hair, she instructed. Oh, I'm body hair, I said, panicking at the thought. Why should anyone else care about what you do? And we shouldn't worry about what other people think of us, my wife said, reassuring me and helping to calm my fears. Okay, darling. I agreed with my wife, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. Go to the bathroom and take my hair removal cream from the rack. First, you need to apply the cream to your legs. Wait a few minutes, then rinse it off with water, my wife instructed. Following her guidance, I stepped into the bathroom and did as she said. After removing the hair from my legs, I noticed how smooth and bright my skin had become. It felt incredibly soft, almost like it belonged to someone else. I then shaved my face carefully. Since I only had a thin beard, my face quickly became smooth and fair. Once I finished, I returned to the bedroom. Look at your legs, they're so feminine. A short frock would suit you perfectly and really highlight those beautiful legs, my wife said, admiring the transformation. I watched as she selected a pretty panty from her collection. She walked towards me, holding them out. Darling, put these on, she said softly. I took the panties from her with a shy smile, feeling a wave of embarrassment wash over me. I stepped into the bathroom and carefully slipped into the panties. The fabric was incredibly soft against my skin, a sensation I hadn't experienced before. I gently touched the material with my fingertips, savoring the softness, before returning to the bedroom. The shyness lingered as I stood there in front of my wife, now wearing the delicate panties. You look so sweet, my wife said with a smile. Don't tease me, I replied, still feeling shy. She then chose a matching bra, a pretty one with padded cups. She helped me put it on, and once it was in place, she inserted a pair of stockings into the bra cups to create the illusion of a fuller chest. She adjusted the straps to ensure the bra fit perfectly. Now I stood there in a pretty panty and matching bra. The weight of the filled bra cups made me acutely aware of my chest. It had been so long since I last enjoyed the softness of women's clothing. Memories of my school days, when I dressed as a girl for the first time, came flooding back. I found myself lost in those thoughts until my wife's voice brought me back to the present. Darling, what are you thinking about? She asked, noticing my distraction. Nothing, I replied hiding the true nature of my thoughts. My wife approached me with a beautiful silk frock, helping me slip into it. The fabric caressed my legs, making my transformation into a girl feel even more real. This looks perfect on you, my wife said, adjusting the frock. 
I'm sure you'll be a cute girl after the full transformation, she added, looking at me with a hopeful smile. Her words stirred a deep feminine feeling within me. I walked over to the mirror and gazed at my reflection. Staring back at me was a short-haired girl dressed in a beautiful frock. Come here, darling, we need to start your makeup, my wife called out. I sat down on the bed, allowing my wife to begin the transformation. She started with the foundation. Then, she applied eyeshadow, mascara, and blusher, the familiar scent of the makeup products filling the air. She finished the process by carefully applying lipstick, giving me a perfect feminine look. Thanks to her makeup skills, I now looked convincingly like a woman. You look amazing with makeup. It's incredible, my wife said with a loving smile. She quickly applied nail polish to my nails, then reached into a bag and pulled out a wig. Did you buy a wig? I asked, surprised. Yes, I did. It's a gift for you, she replied, showing me the wig. She carefully fixed the wig on my head. With the wig in place, my transformation was complete. I looked like a woman in every sense. She then added a necklace to finish the look. Wow, you look like a real girl. No one would ever guess you're a boy. Look at your beauty. Come on, she exclaimed with excitement. I hurried to the mirror and was stunned by what I saw. A cute girl stared back at me, and for a moment, I could hardly believe it was me. Wow, I'm so beautiful, I whispered, almost unaware that I had spoken aloud. The reality of my feminine appearance was hard to grasp. I can see why you were chosen for female roles in school dramas. I can only imagine how beautiful you were back then, my wife said, clearly impressed. Yes, my school teachers admired my feminine beauty, I replied, feeling a sense of pride. I can imagine how many boys were attracted to you at school. I can't believe you managed to fend them off, she teased with a wink. Her words made me blush deeply, and I fell silent for a few moments, remembering how the boys at school reacted when I dressed as a girl. My feminine beauty had indeed attracted attention. Some boys tried to get too close, while others made fun of me. I was lost in those memories until my wife's voice brought me back. I'm so happy to see you enjoying this. It shows in your face, she said, gently placing her hand on my shoulder. Thank you, my loving Emery. Without you, I could never have experienced cross-dressing at this level. Thank you again, darling, I said, hugging her tightly. I'm happy about today's transformation too, she replied, smiling warmly. Oh darling, we forgot the high heels. Try these on, my wife suggested, picking out a pair of high heels. I tried to slip into the high heels my wife had given me, but unfortunately, they were too tight for my feet. They don't fit, I said, feeling a bit disappointed. Don't worry about it. Come on, I want to take some photos with you, my wife said, her voice cheerful and full of excitement. We took several photos together, capturing the moment. The pictures turned out beautifully with both of us looking stunning. I never imagined that I'd have the chance to dress as a girl in front of my wife and take photos with her. It felt like a dream. After our impromptu photo session, we headed to the living room and settled down, taking a few minutes to rest. Darling, I need to start arranging food for us. Are you coming to the kitchen? My wife asked. I'd love to help with the kitchen work, I replied, eager to continue the experience. We both went into the kitchen and began preparing lunch together. Helping my wife in the kitchen while dressed as a woman stirred even stronger feminine feelings within me. It was a special experience, one that made me feel closer to her in a new and profound way. We worked side by side, behaving more like friends than ever before. Without realizing it, my feminine mannerisms began to emerge naturally. We spent some time in the kitchen, chatting and laughing as we made our lunch. Afterward, we enjoyed our meal and returned to the living room. I noticed that as the day went on, my feminine behaviors had gradually developed. These actions, which I had practiced during my school days for dramas, had resurfaced after today's transformation. We spent the evening in a lovely chat, growing even closer than we had been before. Time flew by, and soon darkness settled around us. Emery, we should prepare our dinner, I suggested. Daniel, I have an idea. My wife said, a mischievous glint in her eyes. What's your idea? I asked, curious about what she had in mind. I'd like to go out for dinner tonight, she said, 
smiling. That's a great idea. Help me remove my makeup and nail polish so I can change back, I said, standing up, ready to return to my male persona. Wait, wait, you didn't listen to the whole plan. I mean, we could go out to dinner as two girls. You could go as a girl. I think it would be an amazing experience for you. Are you ready for a new adventure? My wife asked, her eyes full of hope and excitement. Oh, that's a crazy idea. I'm not sure it's practical. What if someone recognizes my real identity? I said, feeling a mix of excitement and anxiety. We can go to a place where there aren't too many people. I'm confident no one will recognize you as a man, but you'll need to stay silent in crowded areas because your male voice could give you away. I promise I'll take care of you. Don't panic, my wife explained, her voice reassuring. But I don't have the confidence to go out in public as a crossdresser, I said, feeling confused and hesitant. I'm sure you'll get used to it once you take the first step. Trust me, my wife reassured me, her voice full of encouragement. Okay, I trust you. What should I do now? I asked, taking a deep breath. Take off this frock and wear a new one. I'll pick something special for you. Follow me, my wife said, leading the way to our bedroom. We entered the bedroom, and my wife selected a new frock from her collection. She handed it to me, and I carefully changed into it. However, as I was putting on the frock, my wig shifted out of place. My wig's displaced, I said, holding it in place. Don't worry, I'll fix it. Come sit on the bed. I want to retouch your makeup, my wife said, her voice calm and soothing. She expertly retouched my makeup, adjusting my wig until it was perfectly in place. After that, she started dressing up for our dinner outing, choosing a beautiful frock that matched mine. She applied simple makeup and styled her hair, then added a necklace and earrings to complete her look. As she was getting ready, I noticed her searching for something. What are you looking for? I asked. I remember I had a pair of clip-on earrings. I'm looking for them for you, she replied, continuing her search. A few minutes later, she found the clip-on earrings, which could be attached without piercing the ears. She carefully fixed them onto my ears. Darling, we need to buy a high heel for you, my wife said, smiling. I almost forgot, I replied, returning her smile. Finally, we took a few more photos together before heading out for dinner. On the way, Emery stopped at a shoe shop and bought a pair of two-inch high heels for me. Once I put them on, we continued to our destination, a quiet, less crowded hotel. We parked the car and walked into the hotel. I shyly stepped inside, feeling nervous about being in public. Sensing my discomfort, my wife held my hand, giving me the confidence I needed. There were a few people already enjoying their dinner, but we chose a more secluded area for ourselves. Despite still feeling shy about being in public, my wife continuously reassured me, helping me to relax. Gradually, I began to feel more comfortable and familiar with the setting. Darling, let's go for a walk outside, my wife suggested after we finished our meal. I'd love to walk freely, I replied, accepting her request. We stepped outside the restaurant and walked around the hotel grounds. A few people were relaxing nearby, enjoying the evening. As we strolled, I noticed four boys watching us from a distance. Feeling uneasy, I quickly informed my wife. Don't panic. I'm right here with you, my wife said holding my hand a little tighter, her presence calming my nerves. I watched as those boys started walking towards us, my heart racing with fear. Instinctively, I clung to my wife's hand, my nerves getting the better of me. But Emery remained calm, managing the situation with grace. We quickly left the area and re-entered the hotel, spending a few more minutes there to calm down. Eventually, we decided to leave, and after a short drive, we arrived back home. I stepped into the living room, my mind buzzing with the memories of the evening. I'm so tired. I need to sleep. Come on. Let me help you remove your makeup and clothes, my wife instructed gently. Darling, today was incredible. Thank you so much, I said, wrapping her in a heartfelt hug. I could see your happiness all over your face, my wife replied, smiling warmly. With a sigh, I headed to our bedroom to change out of my feminine attire. 
A pang of sadness hit me as I began removing the clothes and accessories that had made me feel so connected to my feminine side. I couldn't help but think that I might not get another chance to dress as a girl. I realized just how much my passion for cross-dressing had grown. Finally, I removed all the makeup and female clothes. Emery helped me take off the last few accessories, and then I took a refreshing bath. Afterward, I put on my regular male clothes and returned to the bedroom. My wife had also changed and taken a bath. With the day's memories swirling in my mind, I drifted off to sleep. The next few days passed normally. I never expected another chance to dress as a girl, but the desire lingered in the back of my mind. I was too afraid to bring it up with my wife, fearing that she might not be interested in seeing me like that again. Time passed quickly, and we didn't speak about my cross-dressing experience. I began to think that Emery wasn't interested in it anymore. But on one particular Friday, I realized just how wrong I had been. That Friday, I heard my wife's voice calling from the living room. Darling, where are you? She called out. I knew she had just returned home. Coming, I replied, heading to the living room. What were you doing? My wife asked as I walked in. I was just reading a storybook. Did you go shopping? I asked, noticing the bags she was carrying. Yes, I bought some new clothes, she said, her mood light and happy. Why did you suddenly decide to buy clothes? I asked, curious. I was invited to a women's day party tomorrow in the city, my wife replied. Show me your new clothes, I said, eager to see her purchases. But instead of showing me her own clothes, she smiled and said, Before you look at my clothes, why don't you see if your dress is beautiful? What? I said, my surprise evident. I was completely taken aback by her words. When I was selecting a frock for myself, I saw a beautiful one that I thought would match you perfectly. So, I bought it, my wife said. Her voice filled with love and warmth. Thank you, darling. I thought I wouldn't have another chance to dress as a girl. Your words really surprised me. I'm so happy, I said, holding my wife's hand. My wife handed me a beautiful frock. It was stunning and made of soft, luxurious material. Wow, it's so beautiful, I said, gently touching the fabric. I could see how much my wife enjoyed my reaction. Darling, go to the bedroom and put on this frock. I want to see if the size is right for you, she said. I can't wait to try it on, I said, excitedly heading to the bedroom with the new frock. I quickly changed out of my male clothes and into the frock. It fit perfectly, and its beauty made me eager to complete the transformation. I admired the frock for a few moments before heading back to the living room. Darling, look at how beautiful this frock is. It fits perfectly. Thank you so much for this, I said as I entered the living room. To my surprise, I found that my wife was not alone. There was an unfamiliar woman sitting with her. I felt a rush of anxiety and wanted to retreat to the bedroom. But I realized it was too late to make a quick escape. I stayed where I was, silently observing the situation. The unknown woman looked at me with a mix of curiosity and confusion. My wife was silent, seemingly unsure how to handle the situation. Are you wearing female clothes? The woman asked, her tone curious. It's a long story. Mia, my wife replied. I was unsure of what to do next and felt helpless. So I remained where I was, glancing between my wife and the stranger. Mia continued to look at me, clearly puzzled by the scene before her. Daniel, come here, my wife said gesturing for me to sit closer to her. I slowly approached and took a seat beside my wife. She then began to explain the situation to Mia in detail. I watched as Mia listened attentively, absorbing my wife's words. Now I understand the situation, Mia said after my wife finished explaining. Mia, you're one of my best friends. Please keep this a secret, my wife requested earnestly. Emery, you have my word. I'll keep it confidential, Mia assured her. Thank you, Mia, my wife said gratefully. Mia then turned to me with a smile. I have a special request for both of you. Please, go ahead, my wife encouraged. Mia, what is your request? My wife asked. I'd love to see your husband dressed as a girl, Mia said with genuine interest. I was taken aback by Mia's request. Both my wife and I were silent for a few moments. The silence was eventually broken by Mia. Why are you silent? 
Do you know I really like cross-dressing? I see an uncommon beauty in transitioning from male to female. If I had the chance to watch cross-dressing videos, I would definitely watch them. I'm speaking from the bottom of my heart when I say I would love to see Daniel as a girl. If you have any objections, I understand completely and will respect your decision, Mia explained emotionally. Mia, I'm touched by your passion. I'm really happy with your perspective. I don't think Daniel has any objections to your request. Isn't that right, Daniel? My wife asked, looking at me with hope. I nodded in agreement, acknowledging my wife's words. Mia, I understand where you're coming from, my wife said. I then went to the bedroom to change out of the frock and return to the living room in my regular clothes. We continued chatting about ordinary things. Emery, I forgot to mention why I came over, Mia said. Oh, I forgot to ask you, my wife replied. I came to invite you to join me for the Women's Day party tomorrow, Mia said. That sounds like a great idea. Would you like to come to my place tomorrow? My wife asked. Sure, I'll come, Mia replied. Our conversation continued for a few more minutes before Mia left our home. Once Mia had gone, my wife and I resumed our discussion. I couldn't tell you about Mia's visit before she saw you. I was worried about her reaction, but I'm relieved that she responded so positively, my wife explained. Yes, I've never been so anxious before, I admitted. Daniel, I have an idea. I'd like to see you as a girl in the Women's Day function tomorrow. I think Mia would be thrilled if you did. What do you think? My wife proposed. I think it's an amazing idea. I'd love to have that adventure, I replied enthusiastically. That's great. I'll make all the arrangements, my wife said with a loving smile. Our conversation ended with a renewed sense of excitement. We went to bed, eagerly anticipating the next day. The following morning, we started the day with a refreshing bath and a delicious breakfast. We then began preparing for the big adventure. As the day went on, time flew by, and before we knew it, it was evening. I went to the bathroom to remove my body hair, then returned to the bedroom. When I entered the bedroom, my wife was already there, ready to assist with my transformation. She handed me a pretty panty and instructed me to put it on. After I did, I returned to her and she gave me a matching bra, helping me to wear it properly. I brought something special for you, my wife said, bringing out a pair of silicone breast forms. I had seen crossdressers using breast forms in videos before, and I was excited to try them. Wow, that's amazing, I exclaimed, feeling thrilled. My wife carefully inserted the breast forms into the bra cups and adjusted the bra straps. As she was finishing up, the doorbell rang. It might be Mia, my wife said, heading toward the door. When my wife and Mia returned to the bedroom, Mia greeted me with enthusiasm. How are you, Daniel? Mia asked. I'm fine, Mia, how about you? I replied. I'm good, and I can't wait to see you as a girl, Mia said, her excitement evident. I smiled at Mia, and my wife helped me into the new frock. She then began my makeup starting with foundation and finishing with lipstick. Next, she fixed the hair wig on my head and styled it simply. She quickly applied nail polish to my nails, added clip-on earrings, and a necklace. Finally, I put on a pair of two-inch high heels. Wow, you look so beautiful, Mia said, admiring my transformation. Thank you, Mia, I responded, feeling both happy and shy. As I enjoyed my new look, my wife prepared for the event. After a few minutes, we gathered in the living room and took several photos. We then set out for the event location. After a short drive, we arrived at the venue. I felt shy as I entered the hall, but my nervousness subsided after a few minutes. It was a significant moment for me to present myself as a girl in public. I took in the various styles and makeups, gaining valuable insights into female fashion. The event was enjoyable and time passed quickly. When it ended, we headed back to the car and drove home. Arriving at our house, I entered the living room, filled with new memories. I really enjoyed the event, I said with a smile. I saw that. I'm also happy we spent this time together, Mia replied. I saw that. I'm also happy about the time we spent together, Mia said. I never thought my husband would look so cute as a girl, my wife added with a loving smile. Thank you. Darling Emery.
I enjoy life because of you, I said, hugging my wife. You're welcome. I'm also happy because now we can enjoy our life in a new way, my wife replied. You both are very lucky, Mia said, observing us with a smile. After a brief chat, Mia left our home. Darling, I have a new idea, my wife said. I want to send you into town as a girl. It will be an amazing adventure for you. Do you want to try it? I was surprised by my wife's proposal. It felt like a significant step for me. With a sense of excitement, I accepted her proposal, eager for this new adventure.